Hi, <coughs> today I wanted to speak a little bit more <coughs> about mysticism, what it really means. Uh, the reason I wanted to touch on this again is because <coughs> mysticism is nearly completely missing from our Western over rational society. Um, I was going to uh, do another walk and talk with dogs this morning, but it's really, really hot. It's 41 degrees today. It was still about 30, 6 o'clock in the morning. And my two uh, hairy little dogs, that's too hot. So we're going to, so I'm going to do um, a video for you from home. It's a lot cooler. We've got the air con and all that. Uh, there is, there are, uh, before I start, there are some renovations going on next door. So you might hear um, uh, saws and grinders and all that. The, 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 they're doing tiles and things next door. So that might be uh, picked up by the microphone. So today I wanted to talk to you about mysticism. What is mysticism? I'll give you a definition of mysticism first and uh, uh, that will give you a general idea of what it is and then I'll talk about the uh, experiences of mysticism because mysticism is not about definitions, it's actually about direct experiencing, uh, spiritual experiences that you have. So the definition, this is from Wikipedia by the way, I'll just be reading. Uh, mysticism is popularly known as becoming one with God or the Absolute. But might refer to any kind of ecstasy or altered states of consciousness which is given a religious or spiritual meaning. It might also refer to attachment of, e of attainment of insight in ultimate or hidden truth and so and to human transforma transformation supported by various practices and experiences. So that's the definition of mysticism. But like I said, mysticism has nothing to do with definitions or books or reading about mysticism, finding mysticism in books or religions really where you are dictated to or you're told what to do and you have to obey certain rules and laws and so on and just regurgitate the, uh, whatever is found in the scripture, whether that be in, um, in, 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 in Catholicism or in, I mean in Christianity, in Judaism uh, or in Buddhism or in Islam or uh, any organized religion, really Hinduism as well. So it's got really little to do with that. It's got a lot to do with directly experiencing oneness with the divine, with the spirit. Just like, uh, uh, you know, Buddha did. Uh, the Buddha, the, the, the young prince, Siddhartha, he was sitting under the Bodhi tree and one, and eventually having overcome the, his um, animal instincts, if you like, his basic instincts uh, of hoarding, uh, sex and power. These are the three first most powerful instincts that we're driven with every day. Um, if you remember the story, he finally overcome the uh, demon Mara who tempted him with, uh, with power, with, with sex and with uh, other temptations. Th th this is, the, um, this is uh, the, exactly the same thing that uh, Jesus, when he went, into, went past the John the Baptist, and passed all the spiritual teachers of the day to his own experience, to his own mystic experience in the in the uh, desert and he was tempted by the devil this is exactly the, the demon and the devil the, the demon is simply meaning the over um, uh, extroverted ego which is stuck in the everyday society and the dictates you know what i call the tv values and that would be uh, you know, you shouted out um, uh, the, the commercials, every, you know, um, on, on the TV, for instance, buy a new car, update your phone, uh, uh, date this person and have sex as many, this many times, eat this food, choose this politician, and on and on and on it gets where you're programmed 
to a, to a lifestyle which is not your own. It's not coming out of your own experiences or from within you, from the mystic experiences, but it comes from outside, you know, like when you were a kid and, uh, and the only uh, authority and what you could do was really up to your parents. Your parents were responsible for you and they were dictating to you to what to do. So when we become adults, many of us really continue that uh, string of, of authority. We have given up our or we have moved out perhaps from home and we are now living with our, uh, started our own family and have a spouse and kids and, you know, Volvo and, and, and dog and, and the mortgage and so on. But this is not, a lot of time, most of the time people don't have a choice. They just programmed that way to live. They think that this is the way they live. This is a tradition dictates this. I have to do this. How will I look in the eyes of the neighbors or my friends or my mom and dad? Mysticism is the opposite to that, if you like. It is a direct experience with the divine and then you get instructions directly communicated to you from that divine, from the spirit, once you have established a relationship with it. Now, how it begins, how to have a mystic experience. Mystic experiences are not that difficult and a lot of people actually have mystic experiences but they don't know that they have a real direct spiritual experience uh, the reason they don't know is because it's this information is nearly completely missing in our western uh, extroverted society so you don't have anywhere to compare to what has happened to you. Um, you know religions are not much help these days because they just regurgitate the scripture mind you there is a lot of information and guidance in the scripture because the, the, all religions, all mystic experiences, all spiritual experiences, all religious experiences relate to the recovery of the soul and then living with the, um, uh, with the relationship to the soul, to the spirit, you know. Uh, Buddha started that way, like I just said, and 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 and, and Jesus started that, that the same way. They had, they went into their own um, isolation, into solitude. They uh, overcome their own ego, if you like. They they've overcome the uh, animal instincts, the survival instincts of the body. You could say they dropped the body, and they having an out of body experience. They exp they had seen or touched or became one with this essence, with this um, uh, in an invisible intelligence consciousness that is really what we are. And then you have once you have a step, once you have experienced this once, once you have a, you know um, uh, uh, once you have established contact with this, uh, Jesus called the you know God the Father, Buddha would have called this uh, uh, Nirvana or, or uh, establish or or, or, or spirit <coughs> a consciousness. Uh, you then remember how you did it the first time and then you come back to it and you find the center the core of the center is the self which is your intuition and then you receive information directly a life lived in this way is completely different to the life that you see on TV in movies and novels reading novels it is a, a People who lived this way, which are very, very, very few, have a very strong um, ability to resist what is pressured, what, the, what society, what culture tries to pressure on them, pressure them to do. They might go along with it for a little, for a little while, and then they have a revelation, something that says in their dream, for instance, that you are going in the wrong way. You are not doing what you are being asked to do by the spirit, by the consciousness, by the inner self. And how this begins, I want to touch on a little bit of how to create this space, this ability to have these mystic experiences. Because there's a lot of information out there, you know, drop the ego and forget this and don't worry about that. And, and, and you know, and, and, and you sit cross-legged, imagine light, and there you go. Well, it's not really like that. 
It is, but it isn't. <clears throat> a lot of, um, um, for instance, for me personally, how it all started is, <clears throat> it started with having a real disappointment in the society. It starts with being uh, not finding anything of any value or interest to you personally in society. So you start to look inward. You see? And this is called a redirecting of energy, of your psychic energy completely inward. You, have, you are isolating yourself away from the demands and the pressures that are being put on you. And then something, <coughs> and you redirect your attention. You're starting to look into your dreams. You're starting to look into your, perhaps, if you're an artist or a writer, into your content that you have written, into the painting that you have painted, in the intuitive voice, the inner voice. Remember I spoke last time about the a ringing in your ears, whether your left ear or your right ear, something is coming through. It's about to, you know, you're downloading information. Pay attention. Maybe sitting in a car, and suddenly you've ma you've managed to to uh, get your head, you know, out of the, all the problems and things. It's just the mundane of driving, of stopping and starting, stopping and starting, puts you in a trance state, and then what happens is you have. Um, let go of the rational mind, of all the thinking, all the problems, and something else has the ability to come through. So that what happen, that's what happens uh, when you start to incubate. And the incub by incubation I mean you, your psychic energy, you, 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 which is your life force, which is also your libido, your sexual energy. You start to force it back into yourself, into your body. And then you will realize, and you, if you pay close attention to your dreams, you will see that it starts to grow in your dream, in your dream content, as a sacred figure. It might begin as an animal, a helpful animal. Eventually, it will turn. If you pay more attention, and you have given it a lot of, um, uh, could we, we could say, um, not just attention, but care and love. You love it more than whatever it is, what is, what could be presented or given to you in the, in the outside world, in a society. You love this more. It will turn into a human. At this time, when it turns into a human, your instincts, your animal instincts, its animal nature of that instinct, of the libido, of the sexual energy, has been transformed into human. Campbell calls this a transformation of animal-human to human-human. You have given up, for instance, the lust for love. You see, this is the birth of the real compassion. Now, the real compassion is really seeing um, another person without actually knowing, without, uh, uh, you might know, might, might not know, but usually it begins without you knowing that the other person is a reflection of you. It's just a single power in another um, incarnation. That's all it is. Single energy, single spirit. So this is the basis of the real compassion that you want to help somebody else because it's not somebody else, but it's really you, another incarnation of you that is suffering. <clears throat> so this is the birth of the real human, the human human, when you have managed to um, um, uh, subdue or overcome or put under the, the, the strength of your will, <coughs> excuse me, the animal instincts of hoarding, sex and power. Something else comes in and something else becomes important. I will give you a few um, examples of how this happens in dreams. Uh, <clears throat> it might be better, it might be easier to understand this way. This usually begins to happen about the pu puberty age. For instance, uh, for the North American um, 